So I started out with a piece of maple. It's two inches thick and about nine and a half inches around. So I went ahead and drilled a hole down in the center of it. I'm going to put this on the worm screw. So I have that drill bit marked with a, a Sharpie and we'll screw it onto the worm screw. So I brought the tailstock up to support it a little bit. I'm going to start with the bowl gouge here and just get it trued up. And I'm coming in from the tailstock side and just taking it down until I can get it true and speed the lathe up. So it's running, oh, I'd say about six or 700 RPMs and then I'll bump the speed up once I get it, uh, get it true. Now that it's true, I bumped the speed up. It's about 1200 now. It's still not exactly true on the, the top and bottom of it, so I didn't crank it up too much. But again, I'm still using the bowl gouge and shaping it. So I'm gonna make a platter. So I'm just coming around the bottom. Once I get that cleaned up, we'll, we'll put a recess in the bottom of it. Help support the companies that support our community. There we go. Now I'm going to switch the tool rest around and make the recess. So we're going to use the jaws and the chuck to expand it and hold on to it when we're done here. But I'm going to start out with a parting tool for this and just make that edge. So I want to dovetail that just a little bit and the parting tool works great for coming in and making that first edge. And then we'll switch over to the easy wood rougher to clean out the rest of the material. And this is a nice way it takes a lot of material off pretty fast and makes a nice flat surface across there. Tool rest was just a hair too high, so I'll drop that down and clean it up. Once I got that done, went ahead and ran through all the grits. So I sanded this whole thing dry all the way up to 600. Take the worm screw out, switch the jaws, and get it put back on. And I switched back to the to the bowl gouge. So I'm just defining the lip here, or the rim. So I'm gonna put some beads on this. So I'm just coming across there and just cleaning up a little bit of it. I want a nice flat surface. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and put three beads across the, the rim here. So I'm using the D-Way beading tool and I came in, you can see it now at that, that point, I came in from the lip just a teeny little bit and I'm going to take that, that far little lip off here, here in a minute after I get it, get it cleaned out, but I'll take that one off. I j just came in because if I would have went straight in, it would have, the tip would have cut all the way through. So I didn't want to mess with that. I'll just come back and clean it up later. So I got all three beads on and then we'll get the inside of this thing cleaned out.
and there you can see I'm just using the spindle gouge just taking my time and taking off that little lip on the edge So to clean it up, I'm using one of D-Way's uh, negative rate box cutter tools. So I use this quite a bit for doing, doing stuff like this. I have a set of the box tools, so they're negative rate cutters and or negative rate tools. And they, for doing like lidded boxes and things, these things work great. And for something like this too, just, just taking a pass or two across the face of it to clean it up, it works fantastic. And then I went ahead and ran through all the grits again. I went all the way up to 600 dry. And then we are going to take this thing over to the laser. Oh, and before I do that, I need to find a dead center. So I just took a pencil and once I got to the laser, I centered it on that pencil mark. So sorry about the brightness. <laughs> of this probably should have moved the tool uh, the tripod up a little bit more it's pretty intense so i did a puzzle pattern on this and i really the as i just went on i think etsy and found a puzzle pattern they were like three bucks and they gave me a whole bunch of different laser patterns and so it's kind of nice to just download them and put them into your machine but i just just picked one. This is just kind of a test on, on to see what it would do. I didn't burn all the way through or anything. It just went ahead and did the, the whole puzzle piece. And then it, it actually made a, a circle around it. But you don't see that part in, in that part of the video. But it turned out really cool. And then once that was done, I brought it back over the lathe and just grabbed 600 again and went ahead and put that on with the with the wall doctor's walnut oil there we go it's nine inches across and it is made out of maple so i have admired art leesman's work for years he's an amazing artist and this is nothing like what he does except for the puzzle pieces on it but he hand burns these unique puzzle pieces and then actually like cuts out some of them i will put a link down below in the description to some of his work to his website so you can check it out just amazing artist but i've been wanting to do something kind of similar to this for quite a while um, this is a basic pattern here these are all symmetrical puzzle pieces i just went on etsy and found just a downloadable one that was just a couple of bucks but there are t there's tons of stuff up on there that you can different different shapes of puzzle pieces all sorts of you know any kind of design you, you want so i'm having a lot of fun still playing around with the laser um so what i did with it is i put that center point in so that i could put it on the table in there and center this thing up so when i went around it it's a little hard to see but there's a line burnt all the way around it i went right inside of that bead and then went ahead and did the pieces so if you do laser work um these are all individual cuts too so my original plan and i after i got this burnt we decided to stop because it, it looks pretty cool i actually really like it i was going to burn all the way through on the center one i was going to change the settings on the center one burn through and put a piece of walnut in and so down the road i will do something similar to that but i after i got it done i didn't want to chance it um i just wanted it, it, it i think it turned out great it's just a cool design on there um but that's kind of what i want to do and i also put a recess in it and i rarely do recesses in the bottom of anything but that's why i did that is because my original plan was i made that really thin right there i was going to cut through and put a walnut puzzle piece in the center was my original plan anyway here we are <laughs> um super fun project i it as far as like lining it up with the laser 
you just kind of put it in there and have that center point in there and just move it around until it's I kept running the um, the frame button around it until I got it got it dead center right it or lined up right around there so it so it uh, actually laid out right but it was fun i'm having a lot of fun with that laser i'll put a link down below in the description to on which laser it is um it's a falcon 2 so it's just it's kind of endless what you could do with this this stuff so with if you did a puzzle piece like this um you can do different sizes this is just just the one i i grabbed off there but actually the the downloadable thing I bought, it had just a ton of different sizes of, of uh, puzzle pieces too. But you could paint a picture on this and have it look like a puzzle inside of there. Um, you could even do, you know, circles design around here, like kind of for basket illusion, that kind of thing, something something like that. It's, it's just, there's kind of, it's I, I don't know it's endless what you can do with the laser so i'm having a lot a lot of fun playing around with that trying to incorporate different different turned pieces in that all right well and sorry about the brightness of the laser that was a little a little intense but we'll get i'll get better at filming the laser all right i hope you enjoyed the video everybody take care have a good weekend and we will see you next time